It's Friday afternoon. It's the Tomcast. We're modeling in 3D Max. Let us begin. What do I have here? This is a holographic weapon site on top of a rifle model I'm in the process of making. I am here today to share my work with you all. And if you have questions, please ask them. I am no super expert, but I have been in Max for about 15 years, give or take a few. Studied 3D animation at the Maryland Institute College of Art from 2001 until 2004. And then I went and worked at Praxis Games. Do a little show and tell here. Show and tell. Let's have some t-shirts. Let's do some t-shirt show and tell. Paraxis 2006, a little dirty. Civilization for Warlords. Does that work? It's pretty cool. Uh, Steve Ogden did that design. Pretty cool. He was lead artist on that project. What else we got here? We got, oh, this is this is my prize possession. Civ 5 dev team. Civ 5, Sid Meier's Civilization 5 development team. Hoodie. We got a little bit of uh, things to show and tell. Here's a T-shirt I did when I was at as at Paraxis. What do we got? Civ Four Beyond Beyond the Sword. The expansion packs I was very proud of, and the artwork on the back is a collaboration between myself and Mike Bates. Mike Bates did the wonderful 3D model of the spaceship and launch pad. Looks like a space shuttle launch pad, but a really cool. I think Elon Musk would be pretty jazzed about that that vehicle. Uh, he did the 3D model, and I did the conversion into 2D, and did the did like the outline and stuff to make it look like a silk screened type uh, type artwork. Beyond the sword, I have retired most of these for Axis T-shirts because uh, I just like keeping them. Want to keep them around. Um, yeah, that's pretty fun. That's good for now. Maybe we'll do some more show and tell at another broadcast. We have two viewers. What's happening, Drew? Drew asks, compared to Photoshop, how are the controls in Max? It's like... I want to come up with a good metaphor for you. I feel like Photoshop is like driving a Toyota Camry with automatic transmission and Max is like driving a steam shovel. It's got a lot more levers and bars and imagine an Allison 12 speed transmission in that thing. It's a it's it's a wild animal. The only thing the two have in common is they're both Windows friendly. So right click is your friend. Whereas in Maya and Maya and ZBrush have I think very different psychological hierarchies to what you're doing around around what you're doing. So in Max fundamentally you have your object which let's just hide everything for a second. Just to kind of demonstrate to Drew here. Thanks for tuning in, Drew. So let's just make make a box. So you have a lot of interface that's related to this object. So on my right are my modifiers to that, what I want to do to it. A lot of buttons, a lot of controls. At a primitive level, I can adjust the basic parameters of this primitive object. I think that's why they're called, I think they're actually called primitives. If you want to make something, yeah, standard primitives, box, sphere, torus, primitive shapes. And then you can take any of these things and then convert them into a more complicated element. This is now an edible poly that allows me to move individual facets and pieces and I can extrude and I can bevel stuff and I can even delete faces and then start to edge pull which would be the action of rotating and moving stuff. This is great. So there we have, we have our funky object there. Uh, Photoshop 
A lot more straightforward. First of all, Photoshop, you're mostly in 2D. There is 3D painting in Photoshop. I do have a video about that. Um, okay, what's the, what did you say? Thanks for always sharing, Tom. Love it. Love hearing what's in your head, too. What's in my head is you and your beautiful your beautiful mouth area with the little little fur you have here. Sorry, that sounded a little um, attractive. I just in a, in a very friendly-like way, how well you put yourself together is what's on my mind at this very moment. It's wonderful. Just a little bit of just a little bit of stubble. You got your happy Irish eyes. That's what I'm thinking about right now. All right, what are we gonna do? We're doing a holographic weapon site, and hopefully, I'm gonna lead you through uh, problem solving this thing. So I'm box modeling this, and I'm a sloppy modeler compared to a lot of my com compatriots and fellow friends. I have the actual objects. Right here, Drew. This is what we're working with a Spikes Tactical uh, AR carbine length gas system, Daniel Defense rail. We got the whole, we got the Magpul furniture on it. Um, so occasionally, trigger warning, trigger warning to my viewers. This is unloaded and clear. Uh, we got we got nothing in the chamber, no rounds, nothing like that. And I'm going to be handling this, looking at the different facets and shapes of this site on top. And then as we get into the next part, hopefully today we'll get into modeling this, which is a 3X magnifier that has a little snap to side feature on it. Very nice piece of kit, also made by EOTech. Let's see if we can get the eyeball shot. Can we get the eyeball shot? Kinda, it's a little challenging. Get the eyeball shot up in there. Woo! Three times magnification. Very handy. If you play Call of Duty, you'll be familiar with, these, with, with some of these things. All right. So what I did yesterday was I tried to get the screws on the back of this thing. Hopefully you guys can see it. There's a lot of subtle shapes on this. A lot of like cut-in bits. There's pop-out screws. That nub in the middle would be for a night vision button on the professional model. This is just the civilian model which does not have night vision on it. You also need to get these holes cut on the side for windage and elevation. We're going to do all those today. Hopefully. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is for a game asset, not for 3D printing or real life kind of stuff today. <clears throat> Thank you, Drew. Glad you think it's nice. That's what we're up to. Am I recording? I am recording. What's the coffee of the day, you might ask? Starbucks iced venti I wish I didn't get the sweetener in it. Right, Drew? Like, in our older age, we kind of want that savory more than the sweet. I mean, I still got a sweet tooth. I still got a sweet tooth. But that syrup is just too strong. I could use only, like, a little. Just a little bit. A little bit. Too, too much. Too much. Okay, so where I got this nub. So what am I doing is I'm, I'm making a cylinder, and I'm aligning it with the back plate. Here, let's... Um, so there's kind of two schools of thought when it comes to modeling something. You can take a bunch of primitive shapes and kit bash them together and make an object out of stacking blocks, kind of like Legos, right? The other school of thought is to take a box and completely turn that box, kind of like a piece of clay, into whatever the final asset is. I'm doing a little bit of both, where I'm going to be taking primitive objects and then adding them to my box model thing. So how would I, how would I integrate this nub with the plate that it's going to connect it to with the, the housing of the site unit. So uh, let's, what I'm going to crudely do is we're going to make sure that cylinder, let's, let's hide everything but these three things. Hide unselected. Um, hopefully, Drew, some of your questions about interface will be answered. I'll try to, I'll try to narrate what I'm doing. You said, yeah, can't get too sweet anymore. Too old. Dude, I got two sandwiches though. Those, uh, like the bacon, egg, and cheese wrap is pretty good. I put some hot sauce on it. Put some Tabasco, Chipotle Tabasco sauce. Put some yellow hot peppers on it. Pretty good. Okay, this is generally lined up. I can rotate. Okay, some hotkey stuff, Drew. I'm using my thing, my left hand a lot. It's going to be one, two, three, four for the different selection sets. So one is verts. Two is an edge. I'm able to pick the edge. Three is a loop, which, do I have a loop somewhere here? Loop would be an open, 
edge system. So like this plate has a front side and a back side. The back side that isn't connected to anything would be a loop. That's the red loop around the outside. It's the edges stacking on top of edges. So imagine a rope. Uh, and then four is a polygon. So I can pick my individual polygons and five would be a freestanding element, an element that's not welded to other elements within the object. And then Q W E R is my different move control. So pick W is move. I can move the thing around. E is rotate that object. So I could spin this thing along its axis. So I can rotate it freely around all the axes. And lastly, R is scale. So I can make something bigger or smaller. Follow? Hockey's absolutely crucial when you're when you're doing work professionally in software. All right. So I'm a little, am I rotated off? I'm a little rotated off here. I have a little spinner at the bottom. Let's get it. Does 90 work? Uh, y is off by two degrees. Let's zero that. Okay, it looks like it's perfectly up and down now. Good. Close enough. So loosely what I'm going to do is begin to cut some new geometry into this to generally match the contour of this cylinder. Now it's probably a 10-sided cylinder, 12-sided cylinder. I actually forget how many edges this has. I could have counted, but I went to art school. I'm bad at math. So we have some n-gons here. This was now this is now greater than four sides, this shape. And that leads to complications later and some some bad uh, bad juju. So we're gonna make sure this is under five. Let's do something like maybe this. Alright, so now we have three four-sided shapes in there. Let's do something like that. Alright, we can now delete. The bottom face is there. And now we're going to let's keep cutting. Let's make sure this is four sided. Something like that. Cool. Keeping our edge loops going the whole way around. This matters later. All this all these quads, all this this quad flow system is important if we ever throw something called the turbo smooth on it, which subdivides and smooths out the geometry and that is important if we want to do super high resolution projection stuff if we want it to be really nice and smooth cutting stuff into quads for subdivision is important we might be getting to that later next week okay so now we're going to use our snaps to move the vertices so snaps toggle is pretty handy. The snaps is something I learned about when I was a little kid working at my mom's architecture firm following shadowing Eddie D'Augusto, the great CAD operator, former Marine Corps reservist, Black Hawk pilot, Eddie D'Augusto, missed that guy. Uh, he was teaching me about AutoCAD and snaps and AutoCAD, and you can set stuff to move or to tie into elements that are pretty close. So I like pivot, vertex, midpoint. All pretty handy snaps to use. So now, when my, my cursor goes over the geometry, I'm getting a highlight, a yellow highlight that's indicating where the midpoint of an edge is. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. Uh, and I'm going to take my vertices on the base object here, and I'm going to move those verts to align with the verts at the bottom of. Oops, let's, let's weld that. Let's maybe weld that one here. Let's try that. We'll fix this later. Let's go back to move verts. Get snaps on. S for snaps. And let's move that there. So move this one there. Move this one there. And this one there. Okay, so we have an extra piece of geometry we don't need. We don't need this vert. So I can select this whole loop. Well, it looks like we need that loop to define this screw area on the left. So what can I do here? Well, anytime you have a triangle, you can cut into another triangle and have two quads. So what I might do is cut this down from here. Let's try this. Let's weld 
this to that, this to that, this to that. Now we have all fours, but this is kind of ugly. This this isn't really helpful. So I'm going to connect these two. I only want geometry that helps me with describing the form. So I'm kind of loosely moving stuff around right now. It looks like we have all quads, which is pretty good. Now, our side is not going to be totally flat anymore, but we can fix this. Let's take this cylinder and let's add it. I'm going to delete the right half. Let's pick the right half in the back and delete that. So we're going to do this symmetric. We're going to flip it and keep it symmetrical on both sides. Drew says, Finley is watching with me. Hello, Finley. Am I saying it correct? Hello. Finley. I want to say it like uh, Forrest Gump says, Jen A. That's like the best scene in any movie. It's like when he comes back from Vietnam and they, they, the protesters drag him onto the podium and he unplugs like his whole speech. No one hears his speech because some, some Antifa from 1960 is like, no, it's not Antifa. It's actually the right guy, isn't it? It's like some... Uh, some officer, some lieutenant colonel, general guy starts unplugging all the cables because he doesn't want the propaganda of the anti-war coming out. So he unplugs for us. And then by the time he plugs it back in, he's like, that's all I have to say about that. And then and then Jenny runs out into the into the reflecting pool. And she's like, Morris, Morris. He's like, Jenny! And then they run through the crowd and they hug each other and the whole crowd's like, yes! <laughs> it's one of the best scenes in any movie ever. Just what a maximum feel-good movie. Yes, yes, we got some likes. My friend at Blizzard, Jessica Drew, liked the post. My friend, my shooting friend, Troy Slaymaker, liked the post. Thanks, people, for liking the Facebook shared thingy. We've got three viewers right now. Whoever's new, feel free to uh, pop in. You know, make a Twitch account. Say what up. Let me know who's here and what you're doing. This is my second ever Twitch stream. I popped onto the Twitch uh, for many reasons. First of all, my friend Nate Lindbergh, who works at Twitch, is like, Tom, you got to get those Facebook streams onto the Twitch. Twitch is so much better. And he's right. It, Twitch has a better interface. It's smoother. It works better. What's going up? I'm setting up with his... <laughs> JoJo's in the stream. JoJo's hanging out. Nice. All right. So you can give me the feedback later on how I sound. When I watched my footage from last time, I told myself I need to slow down even more. And it reminds me of when I was a reader at my church. Now, I grew up Catholic, and I used to be one of the readers. So when the Mass would start, there would be two readings from the Old Testament, typically, and then the Gospel was read by the priest or the deacon, for those who didn't go to church or, or Catholic church. I don't know if it's different in the different denominations of uh, Christianity, but that was the kind of the format of the mass was like intro, uh, welcoming song, uh, reading from the Old Testament song, psalm of some kind, and then another reading from the Old Testament, and then big song like Alleluia, and then gospel, which would be like Mark, Luke, Matt, James, John, whatever, the new guys. You know, Jesus' buddies, the apostles. And then they would go into preparing for the communion and then, or no, homily and then communion, right? Homily is when the, the priest talks about interpreting the readings of the day and giving some general advice and stuff. Uh, so I was one of those readers and it helped me with my public speaking. And my mom would always say, You're reading too fast. You got to slow down for those old people. There's an echo in the church. So I need to remember that here. Yeah. Okay. What I forgot to do is I want to smooth out these edges. We generally have these two parts connected here, but I want to I want to smooth some of this stuff out. So we're going to mirror it. Let's mirror a copy. Cool. So now we have two sides of the same coin. Let's mirror this part as well. Actually, let's fit this in first, and then we'll mirror it over. 
So I want to include this part too. So let's do the same thing where we cut in. Uh, so first of all, let's line this thing up from the side. I'm just going to eyeball it, ladies and gentlemen, because we move the verts along the edge. Because this, like I said, this is such a small detail, but I'm doing it to demonstrate just a, to demonstrate a skill set, but to also um, to practice my own work here. So what I'm trying to do is now line these things up. I'm looking at it from the side point of view. I can rotate around, but I can click on this little box, and it'll give me a. a perspective directly from the side. We have two kinds of views in Max 2. This is isometric and P is perspective. There's a subtle subtle difference. So if you're a CAD operator, like isometric view is like a draft drawing kind of look. And then perspective view has a has a field of view. Like you make it like really wide angle. Like I got like this is exaggerated perspective here or I can like zoom it in and be somewhere in between. Sorry, explain that. Joe's like always having to design presentations for the old people. Yeah, man. Because they got the money. You got to make the old people uh, happy, don't you? Thank you, Joe, for reminding me that you are Joe. So I was like, wait, I think that's what Joe did, but it doesn't have a name in it. I got really mad at my sister the other day, ladies and gentlemen, because she wrote, she made herself, her email address changes like every year. And I keep, I keep trying to send her messages. And I don't hear back from her. And I'm like, hey, did you get my email? And she's like, no. It's like, what's your email address again? And she gives me her email address. I'm like, that's not what you told me last time. And lately, it's like her name is not in her email address anymore. And I was like, why? Like, why do you make it harder for people to write you emails? And she's like, Tommy, I'm on my email all day, every single day. I'm so sick of fielding emails. I was like, oh, okay. So you don't, you want less emails. How am I supposed to reach you? How am I supposed to send you fun videos? So what am I doing? I'm generally eyeballing. I'm kind of lining up this attachment. It's like a button. That's something else I do that I wish I did. It's like a, I use the word like way too much. Valley girl. A hunt valley girl. Hereford. Why is it so much fun to make fun of valley girls? Just want to, just want a 3D model. Can we just model Kardash Kim Kardashian's face? It's so beautiful. I'm gonna model Kanye on a bicycle. Okay, now we're gonna cut in. Let's cut in some geometry, huh? Let's rotate up a little bit. Let's kind of cut similar kind of hole. Let's just do it really rough, and then we'll tighten it up. Ooh, sometimes I accidentally hit the right click button, and it cancels whatever I'm doing. It's a nice feature because sometimes you want the ability to cancel, to cancel culture yourself. And then other times you don't. So I'm cutting through the reference, and then we're going to have a hole for this button. Let's make this button transparent. Alt X, and then we're going to go to the original backplate here. So we have our geometry. Let's try to make these into some quads. It's all good, JoJo. It's all good. Into some quads and triangles. You will see this is ugly. This is an accident where I have these two dots not converging. Delete these new polygons I made. I think I can delete these. Uh, uh, not yet. I don't want to delete those just yet. I want to move. The are my snaps still on? Snappy snaps. Let's move these verts to snap with All right, yep. plug the gap. Let's 
target weld the rest. Target weld, target weld, target weld, target weld, target weld, target weld. This is a little ugly. We'll have to fix this geometry over here. You see me rocking my head back and forth like that. That means I'm deciding whether I like it or not. I like, do I like this? Do I like it? It's part of that Valley Girl 3D modeler mentality. I just don't know what I think. I need Savannah to chime in and tell me if this is uh, acceptable. Because she's the resident blonde of the local 3D modeling world. Very good channel, by the way. Savannah, is it XYZ? i got to see where her uh, Twitch shindig is. I think it's Savannah XYZ is her Twitch channel. XYZ Twitch. Is that right? Something like that? Yeah. Hmm. Something like that. I'm sorry, Savannah, if you watch this, you gotta let you gotta let me know again what your Twitch is. I'm gonna go find out on Facebook. So I can properly cite the source. Does good ZBrush, ZBrush modeling, and some Maya work. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Savannah XYZ. I was right. Twitch.tv slash Savannah XYZ. I think. I think. Something like that. I'm going to share that in the group just so y'all y'all can see it. Getting some good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drew's on board. Yep. Yep. Drew's got it. Good stuff. UMBC grab. Drew, what is happening today, my friend? You guys going sailing this weekend? It's going to be a little wet out there, huh? Little wet. Little bit on the wet side. Got a match on Sunday. Pistol match. Excited about. It's going to be a little wet. So here's an instance where I'm going to let's delete those jump. What that? I did want that. Okay, the world this part. A lot of my process is making a mess and then cleaning it up, and then deciding how's best to do it along the way. Drawing is something I'm a little bit more familiar with, so it's a little easier for me to talk and draw at the same time. Modeling and talking is a bit harder because I'm using more of the logic side of my brain. The logic and like, ooh, this is ugly. Look at this rat's nest. This is nasty. Let's tighten that all up. All right, it's good to look around. It's also good every once in a while to select every all the verts and then hit the weld button just to see. Looks like 15 uh, things were welded together that weren't before. Ah, I see this little parameter right here. If I have the threshold up too high, it welds stuff that I don't want to be welded. So we just want like verts that are perfectly stacked on top of each other will get welded. Everything welds. Well, okay, good. So that creates artifacts later when we're trying to render stuff. Right, so let's give this just a little bit of room. Constrain along the edge as I move stuff. It's just going up and down the existing edges. This is kind of cool. And let's collapse these two. Let's bring this in. Let's collapse that. This seems unnecessary. Oh, this seems unnecessary. Let's 
simplify. Cool. That's pretty good. Something like that. That's cleaner. All right. Can we weld that? I think so. Let's attach that. Boom. And let's weld. Let's do a weld again. We should weld a lot of those things. So 381 to 373. But you see how suddenly we get some weird pinching? Okay, this is going to introduce smoothing groups. So right now, these two sides are on the same smoothing group. They are smoothed together. Uh, what I want to do is select this whole round shape and auto smooth it. And that will give it its own set of smoothing groups. And that way it will render as a different element. right? Now I do want to get a little bit of that welding blend between the black back plate and like as, as if there's a little bevel or chamfer between the two of those things. So quick, the first thing I could do is probably just run, hit, hit the chamfer tool and grab an edge and then that'll create a chamfer on the outside. It's going to be a little ugly anytime that there's more than just four edges coming out of a point. We'd call that a pole. So I'm going to try to get every edge to only have, or every vert just to have only four edges coming out of it. Let's try that. This doesn't need to be there. That doesn't need to be there. Backspace. Let's get rid of the extra parentless verts too. You should be able to select every edge around this and then hit chamfer and I can it's a lot of settings here so this is the size of the chamfer this is the amount of edges I only want one so I can increase the number of cuts that, that has if you guys can see that so I can increase or decrease the number of uh, oh did I lose my selection I did Sometimes that's annoying. Let's reselect everything. Control click, click. Camphor. Let's go to just that. Looks good. Sometimes it automatically smooths everything around it. I don't want it to do that. Cool. Alright. And then we can bevel the last edge. So we're going to extend it out in front just a little bit. And something else I might do for this whole object is re let's relax it just a little bit. Yeah, so it just kind of softens it and smooths it out. So it's just a nice little hood. Nothing too crazy. We might, we might want to crisp up this outside edge just a little bit. So what I'll do is select all these <coughs> Uh, COVID. Those edges and these edges and shrink them just a little bit so that it tightens up that corner. Let's widen it back out just a little. Whoa, not along the edge though. Not along the edge. Something like that. That feels pretty good. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Let's make this button just a little bit smaller. Let's save it too. We gotta save our files. Boom. Yo, Savannah, I was just talking about you, girl. Just telling people to come to your Twitch channel. I don't know if you heard that or not. Speak of the devil and she shall appear and show us all how to ZBrush. Yeah, Drew, doing a pistol match on Sunday. Falling steel at the Isaac Walton League. All right, where did my where did my selection go? Savannah shows up, and I can't pick my verts anymore. What's going on? Let's, let's come back out. Let's unhide all. See, see, it's not worth spending too much time on this because it's so tiny compared to the hole. Like this is the hole I'm working out, and I'm just working on like the screws and little latches and stuff. The devil's in the details. Something like that. Savannah says I should do some ZBrush. I'm not making you nervous. 
Come on, you're strong. Thanks. I appreciate that you dig it. Um, this is an older model I'd worked on a long time ago, and I just read it, revisiting it and trying to finally wrap it up. Um, I spent like four hours just cleaning up all the detail of the lower assembly, all the pins and different housings and stuff. This is fun for me, though. I like hard surface modeling. That's probably what I know technically the most about, even though I'm still really sloppy in it. Let's uh, go back to this plate here. So how many hours am I in this project? I don't know. I don't remember how much time I spent on the, the base rifle. See, so right now, I'm having a selection issue. And this happens sometimes to me where I can no longer, like, click pick. And it, what's this? Constraints? Is that it? So sometimes, sometimes we just got to restart Max. All right, so let's go clean this up just a little bit. So let's move some things around. Some little ugly geometry over here. I don't know what's going on. Let's go transparent. We're looking through the mesh. Okay, I see what's happening. We got us an extra triangle from the chamfer process. Let's just shake and bake this a little bit. It's a little bit sloped, so I got to rotate up. Let's take this whole element and move it, scoot, scoot it down just a hair, and then control click on the verts, and we're just going to move everything up just a hair too, just like that. That's good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then let's take the inside of this housing, bring it back in a little bit, and cap it so there's something on the back. Now let's divide that up. I'm going to hide this element and then continue to have enough cuts across so that we're getting good subdivision here. Tom, why are you subdividing an object no one's going to see? Ah, it's just good practice, man. This is the way, as the Mandalorian said. You should see my unwraps. I spend way too much time making my unwraps beautiful so that I understand what I'm doing when I'm texture painting. Yay, Savannah says she's so hyped for it to arrive. Yes. I hope it arrives good too. I'm hyped. I'm hyped that you're hyped. Thanks for getting me hyped. What you working on today, Savannah? You got an orc? You got a Valorant lady with a bucket on her head? I thought that thing was cool. Big bucket, bucket lady. It's dope. Can I do that? I can't really want that. This is fine. This is fine. Okay, what I do want is this to line up. So I'm going to click the three sides of that, hit make uh, along the along the X there. These three sides there, along the X there. Let's just clean this up just a little bit. I don't know. I don't love, I'm not loving this little hood thing. Oops, need to unhide that element. And let's let's throw some auto smooth in here. See what that does it help us out a little bit? It does. This is not this is not perfect. What does it look like on the actual thing? It's actually a pretty high. It's just like a little nub. It's the tiniest. It's like Yeah, it's angled out. Tiniest little nub. Come up like that. And so that, that ZBrush interface is so crazy. Earlier in the broadcast, Drew was asking about how is Max different from Photoshop in terms of interface. And at least they both share the same Windows logic, like file, edit, tools, group, like that same logic of tools up top and then work interface in the middle. ZBrush 
has it was designed by Martians. That user interface is so different from everything else I was familiar with at the time. It's got a little bit more app, like phone app kind of. Maybe it was because it was a Linux. It was, I think it started out like a Linux programmer. One of those weirdos <laughs> who likes Linux uh, did did ZBrush. So they just their user interface flow came actually came from outer space. All right, so all these buttons, this this whole thing actually pops out pretty far, whereas in reality it's pretty flat. So I'm going to select the whole front end, and then from the side point of view, use the move tool and bring it in just a bit, something like that. That's pretty cool. And then we're going to bring this beveled edge back. Let's bring that back up to here, and then this edge will be pro pronounced. Something like that. Not perfect, but it looks better. More realistic. That's pretty cool. Alright, so we got our button. This is shading a little weird. You see how it's rounding? It's giving me this gradient. We're gonna create a couple more cuts in here and hopefully that fixes it just a little bit. A button called Swift Loop is pretty handy. Swift Loop, Swift Loop, Swift Loop, Swift Loop. Just adds a little bit more resolution, a little bit cleaner. Oh, cool. It's feeling pretty good. Just for the sake of it, we'll bevel this up just a little bit, get a little bit more detail. Throw a little bit more specular on this material so it can show off just a little bit more, just a little bit more shine. All right, so you're starting to see a couple, a couple artifacts on the left here. Well, I know because I've been cutting and monkeying about this whole surface that it's gotten a little funky. So what? How are we going to fix that? Well, we can select every polygon in this plane and flatten it out. Let's pick everything here. This is one reason why I prefer to work as low poly as possible. It's because I like to do things where I'm picking. Ooh, you see that? This is a five-sided polygon here. We're going to fix that. Hit make planar. And it's just a subtle difference. But hopefully we don't get as much noise. Ah, there's still a little bit of blend noise here. Still a little bit of blend noise. What that, that tells me is I need to take this loop and make it its own smoothing group. Yep, let's do that. So that gives us a little bit of that beveled edge, but it keeps it smooth in the background. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. Lastly, let's fix this five-sided polygon here by picking, cutting from there and out. Cool. All right, so now I think we're good to mirror this. Boom, make a copy of it. All right, let's attach. Attach that to that. Let's weld all the polygons in the middle. Boom. Boom. This triangle will get flipped upside down. Savannah says, working on some work stuff. Actual job, which is new. Awesome. Does Max have that hard edge thing? I'm not sure what it would be called. Yes. So Maya, you select the edges and you decide if the edge is smoothed and averaged or not. In Max, it's on the polygon level. So it's like what two polygons next to each other blend together. It's, it's the same thing. It's just operating on a different level. Maya's is on the edge. Max is on the poly. And that's called smoothing groups. One of the reasons I can't use Maya, it's just like, it drives me nuts that just a couple of these subtle things are different and it makes my brain hurt. Line that up, good enough, close enough.
Cool. And for my last trick, trick we will just smooth out this object a little bit here. We will bevel the top. Bump, bump. And we will camfer the inside. Maybe let's let's do something a little different. We're gonna move our we're gonna add a loop and then we're going to take this little shape and then shrink that down, not along the edge. Just like that. And that should be should be good. Let's move that along the local normal. Where's that tool? Cool. Alright, what what can we clean up here? Let's bring these probably together a little bit more. I see triangle there, triangle here. Move this down along the face. What I might do is make a whole loop out of that. So let's just um, cut that across. Cut that across. Finish that loop out. Not perfectly mirrored, but that's fine. And all the other smaller details that will be on this back plate we'll use textures for. Part of this project is going to be me learning how to use Substance Painter. I'm looking forward to hanging out with my buddy Josh Hardy in a couple weeks and give me a demo on Substance Painter and teach me up on all that. So any geometry that I feel comfortable modeling, I'm going to model and then we'll use some of my tools from... I'm probably going to author a displacement map of all the little details and engravings I want in Photoshop and then bring that into Substance and then slap it down. That's weeks away though, ladies and gentlemen. Yay, painter, says Savannah. Played around with it a little bit at Mohawk. It's cool. I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to use it yet. Because part of the project we were in was all prototype at that early stage. Okay, this edge of the bottom is probably too sharp. I think that's rounded on the object itself. Actually, it's flattened. Okay, that's interesting. Nope, it's round. I'm wrong. Something I should have done before I merge these is I want to make a slightly rounded border. This is not an ideal way to do it, but I'm using the scale tool to scale and move the location of these verts. Yeah, it's pretty good. Good enough. Cool. Let's throw some light on that and see how it looks. This screw goes down about there. Let's drop in some light. Drop in a skylight. Drop in a couple of uh, spots. Omni there. Omni there. Let's go warm on this guy. Let's go shadow map for now. This light will be cooler. Let's go a little blue. Just a little blue. Cool. Dim it down a bit. 
Let's go to high quality. High quality rendering is pretty dope, huh, ladies and gentlemen? Get a little ambient occlusion calculated in here. Yeah, look at that. Pretty neat, huh? It's amazing what real time shading can do these days. Save a screenshot of that because that's pretty nifty. Pretty nifty. Let's go perspective. Uh, ooh, yeah, I got the bolt carrier. Let's mirror this part over. Mirror that. Clone, copy, good. Cool. You got some deets. Got some nice deets there, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Pretty dope. Just saving that off right now. Ambient occlusion. Love it. Makes everything just look so dang good right now. What is this doing? What's this rear sight doing all the way up there? Get back in your place, rear sight. This thing is... What on earth? When I modeled this, I was smoking crack. I don't... This is way too big for that, that front. I got that. This just seems very wrong. We're gonna... That's the front post. That's that part. Oh, I haven't modeled the rear peep yet. That's what's going on. This would not. This is a front sight that's just like a placeholder because there'd be a rear aperture here that would do very different things. So we're just going to take that, extend that out, and then this thing's going to extend that way. Just, just do something like that. Just placeholder. And then there, this would not be a post. This would be a aperture. Aperture labs, aperture science. Do hickey, that would be a do. I can't explain. It would be a let's just put a let's put a tube in there right now. Tube. Uh, uh, uh. Let's do ten. Let's do one. Yeah, but do I do? That's a little better. Still not completely accurate, but a little better than it was. I go back to standard. This this flickering is driving me insane. Probably driving you insane too. What's Tom looking forward to today? I got some my Patreon streamers are talking at 4 o'clock. Playing some Call of Duty. Maybe at 10 tonight. Usually there's two apertures on an AR-15 site. Usually there's a there's a small peep and a big peep. And the small peep is for 200 meters. And the big peep is usually for uh, close 50, 50 yards and in, something like that. So we'll have that. And we'll have that. Um, 
Um, scale, scale, something like that. Good enough for now. Yeah, that, that looks something like what it's supposed to be. And maybe we have a little, little doohickey. We'll do hickey in there. We'll pivot. Jimmy Jam. This is the job, ladies and gentlemen. Moving stuff around. Yeah, I can come back and fix that later. But that's good enough for now. Let's see what y'all saying. Ambient inclusion. JoJo says. Got five viewers. It's pretty cool. Thanks for tuning in. Whoever is out there, thank you. Hope you're having a good Friday. My coffee's kicking in. Starbucks today. I wish I can get a sponsorship. That'd be dope. I would drink coffee for free. If you're doing work. Oh, my ankle. I like sitting on my feet while I'm working. Remember that. It's not good for a long amount of time. What's next? So I got to carve in two holes on this right side of the outer shell of the site that protects the sensitive electronic equipment on the inside. Feeling pretty good about that back plate though. This little nub in the back is a little too big. Let me let me bring it in a little bit. Grow. Don't be so happy, nub. Too excited. Doing the Pinocchio thing. Just bring it in a little bit. Bring it down a little bit. So, pretty cool. Good. Good. Now, how do I feel about this shell? It's hide unselected. It's kind of chunky looking. It's not quite as smooth as I'd like it, so let's just... Let's just refine it just a little bit. We got an extra polygon here. Let's finish that loop. Boom, boom. Bring it around. Ooh. So the reason these there's so many lines coming across because the front of this thing is actually shaved back. It's milled and shaved a little bit. So I need the contour to be just so. It's ugly, but kind of got to deal with it. Like sometimes you just just gotta. Just gotta have a triangle or two. So uh, it ain't it ain't gonna be clean. Sometimes it ain't just it just ain't gonna be clean. Something something happened in here. What it is ain't exactly clear. I don't want to deal with it right now. I'm too overwhelmed. Too overwhelmed. What I do want is to have some consistency on this angle. This is just looking chunky and kind of bad. So we're going to eyeball eyeball this curve a little bit. And we'll take, take that off. Let's just make it feel a little better. Jumping off. Bye, Jojo. Thanks for tuning in. Happy Freedy. Jojo's my wonderful friend in Wisconsin, land of cheese, in Milwaukee, in Manitowoc Minute. God, he's so funny. Love Manitowoc Minute. Manitowoc. Let's go up to the Tree Rivers. Vortex Optics, also out of Madison. University of Wisconsin, Madison. Pretty cool place. They like to riot. They got Bucky the Badger up in Wisconsin. 
My favorite thing that uh, Manitowoc Minute says is, uh, Go Packers, fuck the Bears. I like I like the pack. I'm, go, I'm good. Uh, I'm good rooting for the Packers. I used to like that Brett Fiver. I used to like that Aaron Rodgers discount double check. Bears, man. I I lost hope for the Bears when they signed Cutler. Like any team that had Cutler, just does not deserve affection. He was terrible. Talk about sucking the life out of a of a of a franchise. I mean, Flacco wasn't too good about instilling energy into a team either, but he delivered at least. He delivered in the playoffs. Color, like there's so many other better quarterbacks out there. Come out of college full of excitement. Get my cousin, man. Get Aaron Murray. Get him in there. Just get color. He's just ugly. This looks terrible. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Look, if Cut if if Jake Cutler is watching the broadcast, don't take it personally, dude. Don't take please don't take it personally. You're much bigger than me. You probably can stomp my face in. I just think that you should probably be a coach, not a uh, a quarterback on the field. You make more money being a coach and don't get your head beaten in. So two of these quarterbacks just hang in the league too long. They're not making room for the new players. Tom Brady freaking retire, dude. What are you doing going to Florida? You crazy person. You're handsome. Be a commentator. Uh, get a podcast. Do your own football companion. You can make a lot of money just talking about the games. Like Tony Romo. Dude, Romo is such a better commentator than he was ever a football player. I love him as a commentator. He's great. I used to hate Tony Romo. I thought he was egotistical. He reminds me of Paul Rudd. Like Tony and Romo, if Tony Romo and Paul Rudd had a TV show together, you couldn't distinguish the two of them. It's too similar. Too similar. I hope you can feel that the, the coffee's kicked in now. Finally, my do I have some good shine? I got some beautiful forehead shine right now. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for knowledge for knowledge of that. Did we learn anything today? Comment what you learned this week how did you get better this week from what you were before Savannah asks how are you liking Twitch's platform this is so much better than Facebook Savannah it's fluid it's smooth the compression seems better the the, the chat looks better all the controls are it's just so much better it's so much more thought out what do you think do you like it What do you think? All right. Housing's looking a little bit better. So we have this scoop out the backside and then it's flat. I want to hit this, make sure this is planar. Make planar. That's kind of, eh, one more. Make that planar. Cool. Uh, let's make, this is not actually supposed to, <laughs> this is so ugly. Let's make this whole thing planar and then fix it just a little bit. Make planner and oh, just oh. This is supposed to be rounded back. Let's let's try this. I might want to try relaxing it. I just relax is so unpredictable with how it's gonna work. Oh, I know, I know, it's ugly. I'm sorry. Needs to go over here. Ugh, I'm just not thrilled about it. But it's the way it's made. It's rounded up there. It's got a little sh little milling done to it to make it smooth. I, th I think that's because so it doesn't get caught up on stuff. Because it's like the highest point. It's it's the highest point on top. It's just a real subtle. Mill, mill up there. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm overdoing it, Tom. Maybe that's the problem. What's more pronounced is that this has some kind of bevel to it. So let's, let's do that then. Let's just hit the bevel on the outside. Let's select all the outside polys. 
And let's just throw a local just a little bit. Just a little, just a little bit. Let's just go up just a little bit. What's that look like? Is that cool? Yeah, it's not bad. Just a little something. Let's delete the end over here. Let's put this edge along the along the X. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Just a little bit of a highlight. Just a little bit. Probably could have made it a little bit smaller. We actually can increase that. I think you can loop that and just scale it up just a little bit. Is that, ooh. Yeah, that didn't go well. That didn't really go well. Point four. Boom. Savannah says, I tried the blue light glasses and I don't think they work to be honest. So Joanne was using them and she likes them. The blue light glasses, that's what they were. Okay. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Good data point. I can't have blue light glasses because I have prescription glasses. And I'm not ready to pay for some blue light scripts yet. But those monitors definitely keep me up later than I should be. Like, if I didn't have a computer in my life, I would definitely be going to bed a lot sooner. As I did on the West Coast when I was out there in California. Oh, I did screw it up again. Bevel. Let's want port point 0.4 and point 0.3. Let's try that. Is that a little better? No, it needs to be, it needs to be point 0.4, point 0.4. Point 0.4, point 0.4. Boom. Yeah, there we go. Because in California, my mom, the only computer was my mom's laptop, and it was slow as molasses. So I wasn't doing too much on it. I did a little bit of work. I did some work for InRange TV, Russell Fagan of uh, KE Arms. Did a t shirt for them for Desert Brutality, which is a gun thing. It's a gun shooting thing. Let's just adjust these a little bit, adjust these edges. So my background is in low poly. Like when I started modeling, 2,000 polygons was a lot of geometry. <laughs> Back in the day. In my day, we didn't have polygons. We had pixels. That would be my boss. That would have been my bosses. So for a hot minute, I actually knew more about modeling than my bosses did, which was cool. I felt strong. I was actually kind of egotistical about it. I should have if I could go back in time, I would have just shut my trap and been nicer to everybody because they knew stuff about painting that I don't, I didn't know, did not know. It's important to be humble, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do some more. Let's do some loops. Let's put some loops in here. Put one in the middle. That'll be cool. And let's align it along the Y. Cool. And let's do a loop Turn it around each side. There is a way, it's like shift or something. Shift control, ooh, what was it? There's a, a way to, there's, a, there's a, like a modifier that makes the loop track in, um, maybe something like this. No, it's shift. I don't know what that's doing. Alt? I don't know what that's doing. There's a hockey that makes it even favoring the outer edge. Let's look that up real quick. Svena says, Hopefully will help with my headaches. Oh, you get headaches? I'm sorry. Do you drink enough water? Dr. Tom asking if you drink enough water. 3ds Max Swift Loop Hot Keys. Wow. 
quickly select loop is control. Slide edge loop is alt. Slide edge loop and make parallel is control plus alt. If you hold down control and alt while dragging, let's look at this. We'll look at this together. If you if you hold out control and alt while dragging the selected loop, you'll notice that it has a similar result, but it's not quite the same. What happens here is the edge loop that is sliding is matching the curvature of the existing loop that's closest to making them perfectly parallel. Yes, tight, tight edges on high poly models. That's what I want. So control plus alt. Right. Savannah says, yeah, just staring at the screen all day would do that, I guess. Yeah, I, I need to take... 90 well breaks every 90 minutes is what I need to do. This is nice here where I have in my guest bedroom in my house I have windows with a nice outside view to the north. Northern light is the bomb because it's usually consistent at least northern light in the upper hemisphere because we don't have the sun directly beaming in during daylight hours. When I was in shape back in the day I used to get up and do push-ups every 30 minutes. <sighs> All right, Swift Loop, Control plus Alt does not seem to be working. So, wait, oh, I think you put it and then you hold it. Yes, it does that to whatever previous loop you made. Okay. All right, boom, and then you click it and then Control, no. Click, hold, no. What? Oh, I think you have to, you, no. What if, there's some logic to this and I'm not quite figuring it out. No. Dude, this is this is insane. This is not consistent right now. Nope. Swift loop. Control puts it on the last loop I made. Alt doesn't seem to Alt moves the previous loop. How weird is that? Oh, I think there's something corrupted here. What we're gonna do is the box trick. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever have a problem in Max and things aren't behaving the way you expect them to, create a new box, align it with your object you're currently working with. Let's grab that old EOTech outer housing object. Let's convert that to a poly. Let's attach that thing. So that's called the box trick. It's resets, it resets the geometry, and then sometimes things will behave a little bit better. Now I'm still doing the same behavior. I wonder, all right, so let's, let's click and then, then I can move it into place, which is interesting. Okay, now it's parallel and going into place. Hold by holding Control and Alt. That's weird. I'm sure it makes sense to somebody. So the reason we do that is that when we hit it with Turbo Smooth, it makes it look real good. Like a couple iterations of Turbo Smooth, that's a pretty slick looking piece of kit. That's why, that's why we do that. So you see how it's softer on the inside than on the outside? It's a little tighter. Like we're, we can add a little more edge tension to that. And you can just take, by taking this outer loop, let's double click that, and then bring it forward a little bit more. It's gonna tighten that edge up. And we can have loops on the inside too. Let's get a, let's get a loop. So then, Middle there, it's gonna be all screwed up there. That's fine, I don't care. And then turbo smooth this whole Jimmy Jam, and that's gonna look pretty good. All right, cool, cool. All right. Next, photo my next trick. We're gonna copy this over. Cool. And I'm gonna copy it or instance. Do it one more time. Copy. Boom. Cool. You need to put. Two cylinders on the outside. 
I'm actually getting kind of tired, ladies and gentlemen. So I might save this for the next stream. It is 2.51. What do you think, Savannah? Any questions, comments before I wrap this thing up? We'll wrap it up at 3, I think. How's the, how's the kiddo doing today? Things to add, suggestions. What you got? Looking good. So far, she says, looking good. Drew says, looking good. Thanks, Drew. Thanks for hanging out, Drew, man. It's always fun to have company while I'm doing this. My thought is I'm streaming to, A, to do work, and you guys get to hold me accountable for doing work, and, two, to practice my speaking, practice my demonstration. Like Joey Diaz from The Rogan Show says, he, he misses doing stand-up comedy just to keep the practice. When I'm doing pistol, i got to shoot at least once a month. If I'm not shooting pistols once a month, my accuracy and my scores go to boop. They go terrible. So i got to practice. And if I'm not actually at the range doing draws, doing doing trigger pulls, i got to be home with my dry fire, studying where my sights are going every time I give that trigger a little squeeze. Not that I ever want to shoot anybody. It's just I want to know how to do it if uh, society decides to fall apart. And someone's coming from one of my loved ones. Got to be ready to protect this house. It's a skill. Skills degrade if you don't practice them. Wisdom kind of lasts forever, right? Like once you have some wisdom, you hold on to it for a bit. But the actual body, neuro connection, neuro pathways of stuff, the more you practice a skill, the more subconscious it can become. And then you can do things like talking and demonstrating a skill. All right. So what I want to do next is I want to carve in these two holes. And so I'm just looking at what those look like. I want to get a lot of... A lot of geometry. Let's go up to like 16. 16 looks good. There's a tool called Boolean where I actually can literally cut into the side of the object. I'm tempted to do that and then clean it up later. So maybe I'll um, try to do that. I'll just demonstrate that. Last trick of the stream. Got to head out. See you later, Savannah. Thanks for hanging out. Awesome. Have a good day. Bye. -bye. And so what I'm going to do for the next stream is talk about booleaning, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do next stream. It's how you cut, use one shape as a tool to cut out into another shape. It's probably what I'm going to be, probably what I'm going to talk about. And we'll create two of these little new screw holes that'll do something like that and then cut into the frame. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So we'll do next time. Thanks for hanging out, Drew, Savannah, Joe hung out, whoever else was still there today. Appreciate you checking in. Hope you have a great weekend. And for those watching this on YouTube later, thank you for watching this recording of a Friday, July 31st 3D Max stream. Hope you have a good one, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Take care.